Invention in E major. Simone Dynastine at the piano there. You mentioned jazz, and for your recital, for the camera, you're playing not just the Bach Inventions, but also a piece by George Crumb, which is titled Eine Kleine Mitternacht Musik. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about that piece, which has a, a very solid jazz inspiration, doesn't it? Yes, it's a set of variations on Thelonious Monk's Round Midnight. So it, it is all, you know, connected to jazz. So the way he treats it is in many different ways. And he actually quotes different composers in the music. You have some Wagner and Strauss and Debussy. Um, but uh, it's, you know, Round Midnight is one of my favorite songs. And, and it's a great treatment of it. And he... He does, you know, his typical crumb. There's a lot of playing inside the piano, plucking strings, different effects within the instrument. Um, but it's a very moody piece of music and highly contrapuntal. You know, there's there are different lines going on, uh, different voices, sometimes five voices at a time. How do you think Bach would have responded to a piece like George Crumb's? I, I think he would have been fascinated by it. I mean, he seemed to be really interested in technology and in, in new new instruments. Um, I mean, the piano was, was in a very rudimentary form uh, at the end of his life, so he didn't ever see it become, obviously, what we have now. I think he would have been really fascinated by all of the different possibilities of the instrument. Let's get back to uh, another invention, this time in a minor key. This is the invention in A minor. Yes. Does Bach approach the minor keys any differently to the major keys? Oh, very much so, yeah. I think um, a lot of the minor keys tend to have more chromaticism in this in them. This particular invention doesn't, but it is quite plaintive um, in a way that a minor key would be. And... I always think of this one as being almost like some kind of a tapestry. The, the two voices are weaving in and out of each other so closely. Uh, there is quite tight, tight imitation, and the hands overlap. And it just, I don't know, I just think about weaving. I, when I was a kid, I used to do hand weaving, mm -hmm. and, um, and that motion is is quite similar in this piece. And here we have then the invention number 13 in A minor of Johann Sebastian Bach. Simona Dynasty now at the piano here in the Geary studio. <laughs> in A minor from Johann Sebastian Bach's Inventions, Simone Dinnerstein playing there. I want to talk about backpacking, which is uh, a, an initiative that you have begun um, to bring music into schools. Mm -hmm. Give us an idea of, of what this is, because it's, it's a fascinating, it's very simple, mm -hmm but very fascinating, and, and I know that it's something that you enjoy a great deal. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I just started doing this in January uh, in New York City, and then I did it in Washington, and I'm hoping this is going to be something that I will do as I tour. Um, my thought was I often have played in schools. I mean, many, many presenters have, you know, educational parts where they, they send you to schools, but it's always in a big auditorium, and I think that while that's very nice, it's much more exciting both for me and for the students to be up close to them. And I wanted to be in a classroom just with one class so that I could really interact and involve the kids and have, you know, have them participate. But of course, the problem is a piano. How do you do that, right? <laughs> yes, and the perennial problem I for know. the pianist. <laughs> so I thought, well, wouldn't it be so great if I could like strap a piano to my back and like bring it into the classrooms? And uh, then I thought, well, actually, for Bach, it does work to use a digital keyboard. And um, in fact, there are certain advantages sometimes because you can show them what a harpsichord sounds like or a pipe organ, you know. And so I asked Yamaha if they would be interested in, in um, collaborating, and they did, and they've been amazing. So I went to 10 schools in New York, and I think eight schools or something like that in Washington, and they delivered digital keyboards to all of these different schools, and they were put into the classrooms, and it was brilliant. So um, I do like a 30-minute or 40-minute presentation uh, where I both, you know, talk about the music and play, but my main goal is to get the children to be able to hear the fact that there are two independent voices. Because you're focusing on the on the inventions. On the inventions, right. yeah, and I, I think that this is a this is something that is almost non-existent in our current pop music culture. The idea of a duet where the two voices are equal. Um, and so it's very hard for kids to hear that. You know, they might focus on the right hand naturally without really thinking about the left hand. And so I try to do different kinds of things with them to get them to latch on to the fact that there are two voices taking place. You have the girls sing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star and the boys sing Row, Row, Row Your Boat. Sometimes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not always by gender, but I, sw I split them up and um, have them sing those two songs at the same time and switch. And then I play the two songs for them. I, my right hand plays one song and the left hand plays the other. And I have them keep their ears focused on one of those two voices, depending on which one they sang. And then I continue into a, an invention and I ask them to try to let their ears hold on to the voice that they were singing mm. and listen to that. Um, and I think it's helpful for them to do that. What's, what surprises you about how they respond, how they react? I think one of the things that has surprised me about it, which in the end is kind of not a surprise, is that they are really excited about it and they're open to it. Like they actually are interested. I guess I think about the average adult who doesn't listen to classical music as being somewhat apathetic in their view of classical music. And so I expect children to be the same. And it's surprising that they are not. I mean, they, they actually get involved. They wanna do it. Like I've had them do exercises where I've shown them what is imitation, like where a right hand plays a voice and then the left hand imitates it. And then I'll have two kids come up and I'll and they'll sit next to each other at the keyboard and I'll say, okay, now one of you is gonna make up something and then the other one has to copy it. And then I'll have them do something where they one of them makes it up and the other one inverts it. And they can do this stuff and and they can hear it and they get excited about it and they're 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 interested in the fact that I'm doing this in front of them and they want to know how do I do it like how do I practice how did I get to play so fast or whatever <laughs> and um, I think that uh, we live in a society in, in the United States that um, for the most part really completely doesn't value um, music uh, except in sort of pop culture but certainly not in education mm -hmm. and 
to me, this this project that I've been doing is, you know, living proof of the fact that kids have the interest. You know, it's just a question of giving this to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Finally, you're going to play the invention in C minor. Give us a quick intro to this piece. I think this is a very unusual invention. It has an extremely long theme, and you'll hear the right hand play it to begin with, and the left hand then imitates it. And it's it's it goes on longer than you think, and it actually almost makes you feel slightly lost in terms of the the pulse, the the meter. You know, you might you might actually wind up thinking that it's a different meter than it is Mm -hmm. and I think that was really intentional it's a it's a sort of off balanced theme well here we are the invention number two in C minor by Johann Sebastian Bach Simone Dinerstein at the piano here in the Geary studio Johann Sebastian Bach's Invention Number no. 2 in C minor, performed there by our guest today, Simona Dinerstein. Thank you very much for coming and playing and for uh, taking the time to talk about this music that could easily be overlooked. Thank you for having me here. Thank you. <laughs>